nervous system, you pick that up in the environment. So if you have the ability to run faster or better, that doesn't give you the ability to extract significance in a culture. It, it doesn't give you that much advantage. So it's, if they're hanging this way, they're hanging everything on the gene today, and it really negates trying to design a society to improve everyone, to give everybody the ability to be creative. You know, it, it, it diverts where the problem really is. Yeah, it's just crap. The geneticists, by the way, are sincere people, but they think it's all in the genes. Actually, all you inherit from parents may be the color of the eyes, the shape of the nose, the color of the skin, but you don't inherit values. You don't inherit bigotry and prejudice, as Roxanne pointed out. That's learned. But we know of no human being that inherited. They used to think that a Chinese baby can learn Chinese faster than an English baby because of generations of speaking Chinese. So they took an English baby and a Chinese baby. They both learned it the same way. <coughs> so you can't pass on learned uh, ability to your kid. But you can pass on a propensity toward liver disease or heart disease. That can be passed on to the gene. But you can't pass on knowledge, values, or concepts of social arrangements. That you have to learn. That's why I say, I make more mistakes than anybody I know. I also say, I've never made a mistake in my life. Now that's what that means. That means the first guy that fooled with nitric acid and glycerin disappeared and the building. And the building although never fooled with that stuff. What do you think? Where do you think people get ideas from? There are no answers. If a man makes wings, he is too small and jumps off a hill, he may die. That's the way the other guy learns to make the wings fly. You don't, you only learn through pain. Dr. Ehrlich did 606 experiments before he could control syphilis. Edison, 7,000 different elements before he found one that didn't burn out. But if you show kids movies of guys like Leonardo da Vinci, and they say he was so far ahead of his time, they never show you who he associated with. The friends of Leonardo da Vinci talk of gears and levers. You never heard of that. No one can jump way ahead of his society. Then there's Nostradamus. Now, Nostradamus was always wanted by the French police for fraud. Did you know that? And the people that translated Nostradamus left that out and wouldn't sell. Then a guy named Frank Scully wrote a book called Behind the Flying Saucers. And they hired me to look at the evidence. So this guy said he was picked up by a flying saucer, taken around the universe, and brought back. So I said, what was the ins inside of the flying saucer like? He was a big leather belt that the hell of the place. Anybody that can fly a hundred million light years through space doesn't need a leather belt. <laughs> then he said there was a lot of blinking lights. Let's see if I can point this out. In an airplane, they had an instrument that moved and says your fuel mixture is too rich. So the pilot adjusts the fuel mixture. In the future, when the needle touches that, it will change the fuel mixture. You don't need blinking lights. You know, an advanced civilization doesn't have somebody talking on the radio like that. It doesn't have anything like that. And the flying saucer, the big one that you have, most of you have seen, has three spheres underneath it and portholes. And that was a 1927 chicken brooder. See as it was. So all the flying saucers that I have seen that people photographed were out of scale with the trees in the background. They're only this size. They said they were 500 feet in diameter, you know. So I have a way of checking those things. So I told Frank Scully, so far, I haven't met anybody. So he said, have you ever met Dr. G? I said, I've never heard of him. He said he was at Wright Field, and he took the flying saucers apart. Now, I was at Wright Field during the war, making safety devices only. So I met Dr. G. And I said, Dr. G, is it true that you couldn't drill through it and machine cut it or with anything? He said, yes. 
I said, I've taken a lot of them apart. And how did you do that if you couldn't drill them, saw them come? He said, well, I use a new method. They went together like a jigsaw. So I said, do you happen to have a piece of flying saucer? He said, yes, in my car. I said, wonderful, bring it in. I'm not close on it. So I brought in a piece of material that he said we couldn't drill through. It was transparent. It looked like loose size or plexiglass to me. And that doesn't mean I'm right. So I asked Mrs. Scully, can I use your oven? My times it or not. Gave it back to the guy. And he said, I must have brought the wrong material. Maybe he did. So I said, can you bring the right material next week? And there was a whole gathering of Scully's home. And he brought me a metal part. And it still had the army serial number on it. It was the center of our Hamilton standard propeller. So I said, I brought my catalog and showed it to Scully. He said, Jack, if I put your stuff in the book, I won't sell. The same with Nostradamus. Get the French book called Nostradamus. You'll see what the real guy was like. The translation was not like that. Don't take my word for anything. I'll tell you where to get the information. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's a question about scarcity, um, and not with regards to production, but more about um, um, in nature. Like, for example, if you, you know the apartment buildings you showed like, in your video. Can you hold the mic closer to your mouth? <laughs> so, um, if you know the uh, apartment building you showed at the start in your video, well, if a lot of people, if the most desirable one is the penthouse apartment, you know, that's essentially uh, it's a scarcity right there. And if the apartment's built in like in the most desirable part of the country, let's say, you know, who who decides who gets it? There's scarcity right there. So you can have abundance in terms of food and, and production, all these things, but there's still scarcity that exists in nature because you know we've got into space. You're talking about a present day system. <coughs> you see, have you seen our So instead of making square buildings, if you do that, most people want the corner apartment where the view is better. So we make our buildings round so the view is present for everybody and some of the buildings turn. Yeah, but you can argue that. In other words, what you try to do is educate people and give them whatever they want in their home. In other words, we only design the exterior, you pick the interior. Now here's how you pick a home in the future, so we don't understand. In the Venus Project's design, you sit in front of a plastic bowl, about three feet in diameter, and you talk. You say, I want a home. The bubble is the architect. This is what kind of home? Most normal people are not sure. So different homes you hear in turn. Until you say, stop, something like that, then she says, I like the children's room next to the adult bedroom, and it moves as you talk. And your husband or your boyfriend says, uh, I like a balcony sticking out over the pool. And the machine says, how far out? And you say, eight feet. And the machine says, if you go 12, you can have a dining area. It doesn't override you, it merely suggests. The machines are subject to the will of people. They don't override anybody. They just say, if your bumper is this high on the car and you have sonar in front of your car, you can't hit another car. Now, if you make the car of a memory metal and you dent the fender, you press straight again and the fender goes back out. Who will hate you? The people that straighten out fenders. There's not a thing you can design and stand for that someone won't hate you for. It, no matter what. Yes. Hi. Um, Jack, I was just wondering whether your concerns about the, the planet and uh, the resource-based economy um, ties in with what scientists are saying now about our planet and the way it's moving and climate change and the fact that resources are running out at a faster rate 